So we've had a little football the past couple of weeks, you may have noticed. I didn't say we had good football the past couple of weeks. I said we had a little football the past couple of weeks. And we're going to have two more games tonight. Now listen, is it great football? Absolutely not. But you can wager on it. And every single bet is the same 50-50 proposition as if you're betting Duke Syracuse or Marquette Providence today. Somebody's going to cover and somebody's not. And the thing, though, that's different with this upstart league as opposed to others, because I've been around for them all, yeah, there is a difference. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Listen, when I first started gambling, when I was back in high school, the USFL, I loved it. And I love betting it all the time. I bet baseball in the USFL. And I made a ton of money. Why? Because I used to bet the Houston Gamblers and Jim Kelly every single week. And sometimes Chuck Fusina and the Philadelphia Stars. And sometimes, God, I can't remember what their nickname was, but it was the New Orleans franchise and Bobby Bear at the time. Do you notice some similarities there? I'm giving you the team and I'm giving you the quarterback because I always would bet the team that could put points on the board. Because generally in these upstart leagues, you take the teams that can put the points on the board and forget about the teams that can play defense, because if you can't score, you can't cover. Just my general rule of thumb. The XFL, the first incarnation of it, a few years ago, well, more than a few years ago now, listen, there was a team, I think it was the LA Express, Tommy Maddox, who parlayed his success, I think he was the league's MVP, into becoming a journeyman quarterback then with the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Express could put points on the board. Maddox had a hell of a season. I think I bet them practically every single week. Made a ton of money. And it was in the early years of this particular website that the XFL made its debut. Again, same formula. Bet the team that could put points on the board, and generally you were going to have success. Now, what's different with the Alliance of American Football and the old USFL and the old XFL in its initial season? You just don't have quarterback play. First two weeks, you've got 18 different quarterbacks that have seen action in just two weeks of play. You've got eight teams. You've got 18 quarterbacks that have seen action. And my gosh, other than the Orlando Apollos, which I guarantee you half of you people out there probably didn't realize, A, Orlando had a team, and B, their nickname happened to be the Apollos. Other than the Orlando Apollos quarterback, Gail Gilbert, who played his college ball where? Where? You in the back. Yes, you knew. He played his college quarterback days. He spent them at... SMU and the University of Texas. Other than him and maybe John Walford, who played his college ball just a year ago at, uh, what, Wake Forest, uh, really, the quarterback play has been pretty damn lousy. And that's the difference in this league so far. Defense is actually, for most teams, has played pretty good, but the offense has been lousy because the quarterback play has been pathetic. Christian Hackenberg, <coughs> need we say more? And the rest of these guys, some of these guys, you're surprised they can throw 20-yard out patterns. Oh, my God. It's been dreadful. And there you go. That's the problem with the Alliance of American Football. Mm -hmm. So we move on. We've got lots of college basketball here. I've got a number of complimentary plays for you, and I will get to them before you in just a moment. As for me today, um, I have my fourth... 20-dime play of this college basketball season. Now, as you know, I rate my plays in a very tight rating system, and I always have 5, 10, and 15-dime plays. I don't believe in coming out with these 100-dime plays, 150-dime plays, whatever. I just believe in keeping them in a very tight margin so you know exactly how I feel about a play. Well, today I have a 20-dime play. It's kind of like a play being on steroids because I absolutely love this play. Um, I have been the winningest handicapper at these sites uh, since July in baseball, in the NFL, in college football, uh, in college basketball, in the NBA, in everything over the past, what, eight and a half months. Uh, I've got the bankroll. I can afford to step out, and I'm doing so tonight on BYU and Gonzaga. I'm not telling you to cash in the kids' 529 plans. I'm not telling you to not put food on the table. 
I'm not telling you to not pay the mortgage. I'm just telling you that if you've been along for the ride, you have the extra money in your bankroll to put a little more down on this play. If you have not been, well, then you've got to play within your own personal money management systems and your own bankroll allocation system as well. But like all the other big plays I've had over the past eight and a half months, you get it as the half price play of the day by using coupon code HALF and all the other discounts and promos are over on the home page. So with that being said, let's get to your complimentary plays today. I think there are some interesting games on the board. Let's turn to the Horizon League where Northern Kentucky is hosting Cleveland State. Quick, give me the nickname of the Northern Kentucky team. The Norse. Northern Kentucky Norse. And where do the Norse play their home games? Where's the University of Northern Kentucky located? Yeah, come on. I, I have you on that one, right? Highland Heights, Kentucky. And you're going, where the hell is Highland Heights, Kentucky? i never been there either, but I know it's near Cincinnati. So there, we're splitting that one down the middle. Uh, Northern Kentucky, uh, no looking past the Vikings in this game uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it was Cleveland State that upset them in the opening round of the Horizon League tournament a year ago when they were the number one seed. Uh, Northern Kentucky just ended uh, Youngstown State's six-game winning streak on uh, Thursday night with a 76-69 home win. Uh, this is the final home game for Northern Kentucky. Um, let's see, they won the first meeting 91-76 to uh, back in January. Now, Cleveland State's leading scorer did not play in that particular game. But listen, this is senior night for Northern Kentucky. And uh, one of the best mid-major, uh, well, I guess you can consider Horizon League a mid-major, right? Uh, it's a little below that, really. Um, but uh, one of the best uh, unheralded players you've never heard of uh, plays for Northern Kentucky, and it happens to be their uh, senior forward, Drew McDonald, who um, is averaging 19 and a half points and 10 rebounds, both team highs. He's coming off a monster 27.12 rebound performance against Youngtown State on Thursday night. He is one of their uh, seniors. He is going to be celebrating his last home game tonight. Uh, this is a team that is 16 and 0 at home. That has won 20 consecutive home games. That is the sixth longest home winning streak in the country. Uh, so there is not going to be any let up. And another motivating factor is remember this, that Wright State and Northern Kentucky are tied for the top spot here with three games to play in the regular season in the Horizon League. Wright State just hammered Cleveland State on Thursday night. Uh, dropping Cleveland State to 0-12 on the road this season. So uh, added incentive for Northern Kentucky to continue winning as well. Uh, not only is uh, Cleveland State 0-12 on the road and 0-7 on the conference highway, but they've been getting hammered in the road games as well. Lost by 16 at Wright State. Uh, prior to that, they lost by uh, 15 at Oakland, 14 at Detroit, 17 at Illinois and Chicago, and 16 at Indiana for two. So that's five consecutive losses all in conference play by 14 points or more. And I think Northern Kentucky is extra motivated tonight. So I have no problems with laying the 17 and a half points in that particular contest. Uh, Texas Tech hosting Kansas tonight. Texas Tech has won five of its last, uh, six of its last seven games. Uh, the only loss in that stretch came in Lawrence against the Jayhawks, who are not the same team right now because of injuries, because of suspensions, etc. Um, I think they start uh, right now uh, three freshmen in their lineup. They played well. They've won three straight games, uh, but. I like this Texas Tech team playing in Lubbock here tonight in revenge, minus the five and a half points, a team that is number two in the nation in scoring defense, giving up just 57 and a half points. These two teams, Kansas and Texas Tech, are tied currently for second place in the Big 12, one game behind Kansas State, and of course, Kansas State hosts Kansas on Monday night. Um, Texas Tech has been idle since last Saturday's 86-61 home revenge win against Baylor, which I had Texas Tech as a 15-dime best bet in that particular contest. Kansas is coming off home wins against West Virginia uh, and Oklahoma State in between. They went to TCU and won that game. Uh, again, Kansas is a good team, but one that has not fared well on the road this year outside of Lawrence. 
outside of the field house. The Jayhawks are just two and six straight up. They lost by seven at Kansas State. They lost by 10 at Texas. They lost by eight at Kentucky. They lost by one at West Virginia. They lost by 17 at Iowa State. The home team has covered 21 of the last 30 in this series. And I have no problem again laying the seven and a half, uh, the five and a half points with Texas Tech in this particular battle. Uh, I'm gonna go with Nevada, a team that has made me a lot of money this season and lay the 12 and a half points with Nevada here, looking to bounce back from only its second loss this season as the Wolfpack had its 10-game winning streak snapped with a loss at San Diego State on Thursday night. Remember the last time San Diego State lost, it was to New Mexico. Then they reeled off those 10 straight wins, and in that 10-game winning streak, they averaged like uh, 86 points a game and won by an average margin of 22 points. Um, when they lost 65-57 to to San Diego State the other night, it wasn't a big surprise because the Aztecs are a team that simply has the Wolfpack's number. They've won 10 of the last 12 in the series. They're 5-6-2 uh, or six and two, uh, against Bill Musselman since he's taken over the Wolfpack. They've won three straight overall since last March in this particular series. They're 3-0 and oh at home in this series over the past couple of years. Um, and listen, you know, it was just one of those games for Nevada going against an Aztec team that just plays them well and is tough defensively. Uh, they shot a season low 33.9%. Uh, Jordan Caroline, who has just had a great season for Nevada, uh, entered that game averaging 18.8 .8 points. He had six points, three for 12 shooting. Uh, first meeting against Fresno State this season on the road, uh, he had 19.16 rebounds. I think that Nevada rebounds here literally and figuratively at home in this particular series. Um, you know, Fresno State is coming off a loss at home to Air Force 64-61. And it wasn't nearly as close as that final score indicates because Air Force was actually up by 17 points with four minutes to go before uh, Fresno State made a late run to make it respectively. And that was an Air Force team that had lost four of its previous five games. And when I was researching that particular game, I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, one of the beat writers for Fresno State pointed out that in that particular contest, that Fresno State was 6 for 17 on layups against Air Force. And the Nevada loss at home January 12th, they were 7 for 20 on layups. And Nevada is a more athletic team, has more length, and is a much more physical team than Air Force is. And you've got a Nevada team that leads the Mountain West Conference in scoring defense, only giving up about 66 points a game. A second in field goal defense, holding opponents to about 40%. Uh, number two in three-point defense, holding foes to about 31.5% from the three-point line. Um, I just think that in this particular ring match, that Nevada will play even better than it did in the first go-round when it won at Fresno, a game in which it launched 37 three-point shots and only hit 10 of them, but used its physical side to grab, physical size, excuse me, to grab 17 offensive rebounds, which it converted into 27 uh, second-chance points. Um, and it also took advantage of its defense to turn 13 Fresno State turnovers into 31 points. Nevada has covered six of its last seven after straight up losses, and I like Nevada minus the points to rebound here. So again, I like Texas Tech, I like Northern Kentucky, I like Nevada. If I had to rank them, I would do that in the exact reverse order. Uh, Nevada, Texas Tech would be right there at the top, and Northern Kentucky would be number two. That'll do it. Wish you well and talk to you again tomorrow. Good luck, everybody.